and even those of you that will join us later <laughs> when we put the uh, recording of this online, either on YouTube or on Facebook, we're so thankful for this opportunity to uh, share God's Word with you. Uh, most of you know that uh, I have experienced numerous miracles in my life, and uh, here most recently in the midst of a, a open heart procedure when I bled out on the table as my wife's wife and daughters prayed and others prayed as well. The Lord had mercy and extended my life once more. Um, you know, I was looking the other day and I can count three specific times at least that I was on the threshold of, of uh, death and one time I actually made it to heaven years ago when I overdosed on drugs. Uh, was in a situation where I was um, suicidal, depressed in life and Interestingly enough, at that point when I endeavored to take my life, I uh, soon after taking the, the medication I did to overdose, I thought, this is stupid. Probably the most rational thought I'd had in my life up to that point. I said, this is stupid. And so I actually tried to drink a bunch of salt water and expel those pills and thought I had done so. I, I looked in the commode where I had, had thrown this up, not trying to be gross, and uh, looked like a, you know, looked like I had at least thrown up most of them, if not all of them, and uh, evidently didn't get it quick enough, didn't get it thorough enough, because next thing I know, I'm out of my body, headed to heaven, and uh, it's kind of interesting. There's so much to that story that I'd, I'd like to share. Maybe I'll take the time just to share the whole testimony at some other point, but you know, I'd, I'd actually suffered kind of a violent death because my body had gone into convulsions and that's what awakened my uh, then wife was she heard me thud when I hit the floor is what I understand. And she called for an ambulance. They sent an ambulance and uh, over the course of time they tried to revive me by various means. Couldn't get me to revive and we're about to call my time of death when a very good friend who also was a Bradenham police officer Hubert Robinson came up on the scene and he later described things to my mom. He said that when he came on the scene, they were getting ready to call my time of death. And he said, nope, you're gonna try one more time. And they did, they tried one more time. And uh, he said they got a slight pulse and they transported me to Manatee Memorial. And uh, at Manatee Memorial, they conferred with my family, told my family there was really little, if any hope, uh, short of a miracle that I would survive that. In fact, they told my mom, please don't ask us to put Mike on life support because if we do, and there by some off chance he manages to survive, he'll just be a vegetable and he'll sit in a chair and drool on himself all day. And that was the most hope they could offer my mama. So anyway, my mom uh, prayed and she put me on the altar before God. She said, Lord, essentially this is what mama told me later. She said essentially that she prayed, Lord, if Mike can be raised up and lead a meaningful life, then raise him up, but if not, let him come on home. And uh, <clears throat> meanwhile, I'm in heaven and I'm visiting with my paternal grandmother, Granny Thorpe, who I love dearly. You know, uh, I, I think if I never felt loved by anybody else in my life, I felt loved by my, my Granny Thorpe and by my Grandpa Hardy. Um, <laughs> I kind of it, it felt like as a child I was just tolerated by everybody else and, and uh, there's a reason for that and I'm not even going to go into it but that's just how I felt and, and uh, what I believed and that helped contribute to, you know helped contribute to my overall depression in life I just felt like I was the biggest blot on earth and I needed to <laughs> remove myself from that equation mm. so anyway <clears throat> Uh, I'm visiting with Granny Thorpe and, and uh, having a good time up there with her and it was kind of funny because I had, uh, being suicidal, had begun to research, you know, what's my destiny going to be if I kill myself? You know, what's going to happen to me? And I'd come to the conclusion because so many people had the opinion at that time, and many yet do, that if you took your own life, then you would, it, it was a, a sentence to hell. You're going to go to hell. Huh. Listen, I don't advocate that anybody take their own life. No. There, there's something better, amen. And, and uh, please don't. Please, if you're if you're pondering that, if you're depressed, reach out to somebody and let them know. Amen. 
Yes. There's people around you that love you. That, yes. that You know, your absence would leave such a void in their lives. And in some cases, with you know, at our age now, uh, with our children and grandchildren, it, it could be a death sentence on them. Uh, you know, it could it could set a, a a pattern for their future behavior is one way to look at. <laughs> or what if we're not here and, and we were the ones that were supposed to lead them to Jesus and and prepare them for eternity in heaven and and yet we're not here to do it. Please don't take your life. If the devil is trying to move you that strongly in that direction. There's got to be a reason he's doing that because right. he's a thief and he's only come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And, and folks, what I found out is this. My life was what it was because I wasn't living it to its full potential in God's grace. And I've learned. I, I'm still not there yet, but I'm on a lot better footing than I ever was before. And God's such a good God. He's such a loving Father. Yes. He doesn't want your life on this planet to be a hellish endurance and existence and, and he's got better for you and so uh you know I I, I I just believe god right now to comfort those of you that are struggling some of you have lost a loved one and see the impact of, of them having gone on before they should have has loved you flirting with that same thing please don't do it there's other people depending on you Amen. and it could be their eternity Amen. well anyway i saw granny and and uh First thing I thought when I found out I was in heaven, we were standing out in this lush, beautiful field of grass under a tree. And the first thing I thought was, how did I end up here? Because I prepared myself to get to hell. And the devil had sold me this lie that hell itself couldn't have been worse than the life I was living. Yes, it can a million times over and right. then some. Right. And, and, uh, but here I was in heaven and, and I thought, well, how am I here? And I was immediately reminded that as a child, uh, I had attended a Sunday school class in which they had presented the gospel just in the simplest of terms. They had a flannel board, they had a little valentine heart with a door cut in it, and they talked about uh, everybody needs to ask Jesus into their heart. Don't you want to ask Jesus into your heart? And I begrudgingly went along with it because I had several friends in that class and I didn't want to be the odd man out. But I was really kind of there in rebellion anyway. I didn't want to go to Sunday school that day or any other day for that matter at that age. And I've been somewhat forced to go. And then when I got there, I found out that the teachers of that class were people that, that my parents had talked, uh, uh, you know, at the family table and talked with others about being notorious gossips and backbiters. <laughs> Isn't that rich? And I love my parents. I don't mean them any disrespect, but here they were gossiping and backbiting about the gossips and backbiters. But, but see, as a child, I, that registered on me. I... I, I didn't want to have anything positive to do or a positive interaction with somebody that, that those that I loved and cared about uh, esteemed. Well, frustrated. Yeah, <laughs> uh, in such a way, or didn't esteem, I should say, I guess. Anyway, so then the next thing I thought was, man, if I'd have known it, it was this easy to get to heaven. Listen, I was jumping up and down. Most of you that know me know, you know, unless I was drinking something or smoking something, I was very reserved in life. I was always very shy. I can remember when I was just a little bitty guy, probably about three, four years old, walking down uh, downtown Bradenton before they even built Cortez Plaza, walking down uh, the street with my mom, and this very attractive lady came out and spoke to my mom, a friend of hers, and, and I, I remember standing behind my mom. Listen, I did the same thing after I'd been to Bible school. I was out with my mom shopping somewhere, saw an old girlfriend, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this was after I was married to Robin. I wasn't looking for nobody, and I wasn't looking for no trouble. But I saw this old girlfriend. In fact, I got in line behind her out at Albertson's and uh, <clears throat> grocery store. And, and when I saw who it was, my mom was coming up behind me, and I stepped back to let my mom get ahead of me. <laughs> because, I, you know, security, looking for a sense of security there. Well, anyway, so here I am. I'm jumping up and down for joy, and I'm, I'm rejoicing that I'm in heaven rather than hell. And I made the statement. I said, if I'd have known it was this easy to get to heaven, I'd have told everybody. Yeah. And that's why I'm here today. I'm here to tell you that it's as easy as receiving Jesus as your risen Lord and Savior. It's not that you have to earn salvation. God's not keeping score if he does this many things right, and despite doing that many things wrong. 
Uh, he's going to come. No. It, it's, if thou shalt confess with thy, thy mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Mm -hmm. uh, it's as easy as receiving Jesus. Jesus is the difference between heaven and hell, eternity, and eternal life or eternal damnation. And, and uh, it's no more difficult than that. Amen. Should we live a decent life? Yeah, we ought to live a life that bears fruit, that speaks well of the, the Lord we've received. But our salvation rests upon his work, not ours. Right. Amen. Right. And, and so uh, anyway, uh, to me, it's just so critically important that we know the word of God. Think about this a moment. Look at me and, and those of you that know me. Why would God have such mercy on Mike Thorpe? You know, especially those folks that uh, knew me from Bradenton and loved me in spite of myself. God bless you and thank you. So many of you have been so kind and so generous. And we appreciate your prayers. We appreciate your encouragement and support. Mm -hmm. You've been such a blessing. And, and uh, I'll be thanking you in eternity to come because I believe God used you and, and blessed me because of you. And, and, and it just blows me away to this day. Uh, you just have no idea what your kindness means to me. But why would God raise me up? You know, as a pastor, I've seen people much younger than me, uh, people that had such potential in life that, mm -hmm. that, I, uh, that died an untimely death. You know, and even the scriptures ask the question, why shouldest thou die before thy time? Implying that there are those that, that God, his will is that they would live longer. In fact, in Psalms 91, we're told that with long life he'll satisfy us and show us his salvation. Why yes. is it that that so many people, and, and some of you know some people like this, I know I do, uh, that have, have gone on too soon. I've lost family members, I believe, that went on too soon. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I fully expected my mama to, to, to be here to bid me farewell eventually because I thought mom was going to live forever, but she went on a, 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 a cruise and contracted some illness and and ultimately died on board ship. Well, they, they got her to San Jose, but by the time they got her there, she was all but gone then, and ended up, they did surgery, and sure enough, the next morning, she was gone. But, you know, her mother before her lived well into her 90s, and we just assumed Mom would too, and here she was, 76, I believe it was, and, and she passed. Too soon. Yeah, far too soon, I believe. She was healthy as a horse other than got sick on that stupid cruise, got Norwalk, is what they said. Well, anyway, um, what's the difference? Why am I here? I believe one thing is, is I've had the advantage of being surrounded by people who have learned the Word and been taught the Word of God. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, our text for this series of messages is found over in John 14, 12. Would you turn there with me just a moment? We didn't get into the Word much last week, but there's nothing more important to me than to share the Word of God with you. In John 14, 12, Jesus was speaking, and, and uh, let me go ahead and open. I don't want to quote it exactly. I, I read different translations, so sometimes there's a tendency to want to misquote according to the King James. But in the King James, verse 12 reads this way. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me. Notice Jesus, uh, in, in using this terminology, uh, you know, he removed the limitations of time's horizon. I, I don't, I, I, uh, in other words, he didn't say for a limited time or this is a limited time offer, <laughs> but the clear indication, it's not an implication, it's an indication. Right. The clear indication is anybody that ever believed on him now, what did he mean by believing on? Believe that he is risen from the dead and confess him as Lord. Anybody that does that, he said, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my Father. Mm -hmm. Now, we've had religion try to explain all kinds of things and diminish what Jesus was really saying here. But Jesus said what he meant and meant what he said. Amen. 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 And notice he went on to say in verse 13, Whatsoever ye shall ask in my name. Listen, that word ask, we've researched it. And that word ask means to make a demand. 
for something due. Yes, yes. Something that in other words, to us. in other words, we read the inventory of all that Jesus achieved and appropriated through His life and sacrifice. Yeah. And we've got a right to to make a demand on that account. Amen. 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 Uh, hold your place and let's go over to Acts chapter 3 just a moment, okay? Acts chapter 3. I want you to see this in action. And, and uh, this is where Peter and John, it says in verse 1, Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb. Now, ultimately, as we read this account, read on through chapter 4, we find out this man was 40 years old, 40-something years old at this point. And so he had been, you know, there's people that say, well, you've been sick so long, just get used to it. God, you know, learn to live with it. <laughs> and by, by 40 years old, I guess you would have learned to live with it. But thank God that still doesn't have to be the destiny. Don't let unbelief put limitations on God who's infinite. Amen. It says, Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, and being the ninth hour, and a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which was called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered in the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. In other words, this guy was just looking for some financial assistance, wasn't right. he? And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that it didn't say expecting to see to receive money. I'm sure that's probably what he was thinking. Sure. But it says that he was expecting to receive something of them. And then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none. But such as I have give I thee in the name. In the name. What's he doing? He's demanding what's due in this man's behalf. This man was a Jew. He was a practicing Jew. Here he was at the the gate to the temple, and and he was suffering this infirmity he had for at least forty years from his mother's womb, and, and so here's somebody that that believed on Jesus and believed that the works Jesus did he could do also because Jesus commissioned him to. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes. Amen. There's a lot of confusion today in the church world uh, because people just really. They've missed the heartbeat of God as it pertains to the foundation for the church, I believe. And I don't think it's a malicious thing, but we need to come back to the Word of God. We need to get, get rooted down into the Word of God. We need to build a foundation upon His Word mm -hmm. and work from there. Amen? Amen? You know, there's a lot of people today that are down on big churches and down on small churches. <laughs> you know, anybody that the devil can talk to is going to find a reason to be down on church. And listen, there's sometimes I'm down on church <laughs> when it's religion rather than faith, when it's religion rather than relationship. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, one of the greatest enemies to the faith or faith in the Lord Jesus Christ has always been religion. Right. Uh, when Jesus presented himself to Israel, it said he came unto his own and his own received him not. Why? Because religion had inoculated them against him. Yeah. And so, really, in, in one sense, only the most desperate of people were receptive to Jesus. Only those that saw their, you know, saw no alternative to approaching Him to to see some need, some critical need in their life met. Mm -hmm. And so, anyway, we're not. I just have everybody turn. Um, Acts. Acts. Okay, we're still in Acts chapter three. Uh, so it says down here. <laughs> And, and uh, verse 6, Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Notice he didn't pray uh, the prayer that so commonly is prayed in many churches. You know, there's churches that say, oh yeah, we believe God can do miracles. Notice they usually say can do because they're trying to allow an out. Um, I don't just believe God can do. I believe he does when people will approach him in faith through his word. Amen? And, and, and notice here, he didn't pray, God, if it be your will, heal this man and let him walk. Amen? Amen. Uh, li listen, write this down and look at it later. Look over at 1 John 5, 4, and, and uh, it'll tell you simply this. As you start reading through there the next few verses, it'll tell you that if we ask anything according to his name, by the way, that word ask over there is the same word demand. 
It says, if you demand as being do anything in his name, according to his will, uh, it, it, essentially it's yours. It takes faith to receive from God. He that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder. In other words, he responds with affirmation to our petitions when we pray according to his word. And that's what Simon Peter was doing here. He was he was speaking the word of God over this man. He said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted. Do you think he's a, he he assumed this guy was going to get healed. He believed this guy was going to get healed. Mm -hmm. Listen, we've seen so many miracles, and, and and I believe God wants to work miracles in your life and work miracles in behalf of your loved ones. Yes. I, I taught in a Bible school mm -hmm. for a while, and we just taught the Word of God. I taught a class actually based on the book Christ the Healer, and, and I can remember we had so many different miracles. We had a lady that was barren. Uh, she came in one day a little bit late to class, she and her husband, and, and she had just been to the doctor that just confirmed that she would never have children. And no one knew. And no one knew. No one knew this. And, and she came into the class and she sat down. And, and uh, my heart kept being tugged toward her, mm -hmm. kept being pulled toward her and toward her husband. And I finally stopped the class. I said, Sister, her name was Patty. I said, Sister Patty, Lord wants me to tell you the the he's given you a baby and, and and i can't remember the exact words beyond that but but you know the emphasis was god's given you a baby daughter just said there's, there's no way she'll ever have a baby another fellow in the class came up a student actually and he affirmed everything i'd shared by the spirit of god to her in the mouth of the two or more witnesses okay. let her reward be it and uh, to her and her husband <clears throat> and would you believe it almost exactly nine months to the day she gave birth to a beautiful baby girl mm -hmm. her name was Michaela I don't know where she got that name but her name was Michaela I, uh, how do I remember that well <laughs> gee I wonder and I don't know that it was in honor of, of uh, mm -hmm. the teaching we'd done or anything like that we, we had a little grandmother that was in our class she had a grandson that was born without any toes on mm -hmm. his feet related and, to Pam yeah related to, to Pam who's in our church to this day yeah. and Pam Bell right. and um, Sister Sybil and Sister Sybil was just as sweet as she could be uh, she at the time I believe was in her 40s if not her 50s and she came to me and she said uh, Brother Mike do you believe God would heal my, my grandson's feet I said well sure he will mm -hmm. sure he will and so I said do this I said go and she told me what was going on I said you go home you hold that baby and you hold those feet out there and you look at them you command those toes to grow yes and she did she did it and uh you know there's there's people like, oh how dare you give that little grandmother false hope or that that poor barren woman how dare you give them I didn't give them false hope. I gave them the living word the truth, of God. The truth. Amen. The life-giving word. God's word is life to those that find it. Yep. Medicine to all their flesh, whether it's their womb or their feet. Mm -hmm. and, and she went to home. She picked up that little grandbaby. She looked at his feet and said, Toes grow in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I didn't see her for several days. She said she came back. You know, She came back in. She said a day or two later, she looked at those little feet and it looked like you know the eyes on potato when they start to bud out? She said on the end of each foot, there were five little buds yep. where those toes started to grow out. And, and she said over time, I think it was about a week and a half, two weeks, those toes grew completely out. It wasn't just an instant miracle right. in terms of the total manifestation, but she continued to speak and continued to claim. And, and she didn't pray, God, if it's your will, please grow my grandbaby some toes. Right. See, see, that's she not how it works. She knew he did, and mm -hmm. she, you know what? God's better than us, and right. and there's things that we would do out of a benevolent heart. Surely we understand God's got a a more benevolent heart than we do. And so anyway, she, she, uh, you know, she experienced that miracle. There've been other miracles. We we had a little lady that had been diagnosed with tumors. They actually had had done uh, I don't know if it was an MRI or X rays or what, but they determined that she had three tumors in her abdomen right. and they came in the Sunday before she was scheduled for surgery on a Monday. <coughs> they came in and said, Can we pray for sister so and so? And they described what was going on. Mm -hmm. And I remember getting one of the ladies to lay hands on her tummy mm -hmm. about where this was and I laid my hands on that lady's hand 
uh, that was resting on her tummy. Right. You know, we're told to lay hands on the sick and whatever. <laughs> I laid my hands on her hand and I, I spoke to those things. I said, tumors in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the name above every name in heaven and earth, I curse you to the very root, and I command you to be withdrawn and removed yeah. from this body and cast into the sea. Yeah. In Jesus' name. You know, that's, that's very uh, scriptural. It's in line with Mark chapter 11, 22 through 24. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. And, and so, <clears throat> so uh, she went in, she had the surgery, and, and it was funny, some of those ladies that had been there with her when we prayed for her came into church the next service, and they were laughing, and they were talking about it. They said that when the surgeon opened up her ab her stomach, her abdomen, not her stomach, but you understand her abdomen, when they opened her up, that there were three tumors there all right, but they were detached and they were shriveled up and dead, laying loose on the inside of her. So they didn't have to go in there and say, well, this looks like tumor, we'll cut here. And you know, they didn't have to, nothing to it. All they had to do was open her up, pluck the things <laughs> out, and, out, and sew her back <laughs> up and, right. and, and send her home to recover. Amen. And, and uh, she did, praise God. Listen, yeah. I got I, I to gotta let Robin share with you. Mm. Um, I know she's probably got something she wants to say, but, but I tell you, it's time we preach the gospel that we were commissioned to preach. And if you don't know what that is, read Mark chapter 16. Read the latter verses of that because Jesus said for us to go into all the world and preach the gospel. The gospel's good news. It isn't good news that God sure would do something that could, but he's unable to at this time. That's not good news. Right. I want to know what God can do right now right. And, and how he can do it. And listen, we're, we're going to continue this study. It's taken us a while, but I believe it'll be worth it if you'll follow with us, particularly those of you that have loved ones that need some kind of a miracle. Mm -hmm. But we're going to study Jesus and his testimony. And if we're going to do the works that Jesus did, we need to learn how he did those things. Mm -hmm. We need to learn why he did those things. And the methods, uh, not just the, the how in terms of the methods, but we need to learn uh, by what means he did those same works. Amen. Mm -hmm. And what was his motive? I believe that all plays into this. Amen. Once you understand that, I believe that you'll just, you know, you'll be like these guys. And when you go to Walmart and you see somebody suffering, instead of saying, boy, I wish, wish somebody, I wish God would do something, you know, you'll become God's instrument to reveal his goodness and his love to those that you yeah. encounter that need it. Amen. Amen. And I don't know anybody that doesn't need it. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Everybody needs to know God loves them. Robin, you got anything to say? Actually, I want you to share it more. <laughs> you've, you've stirred me up here, but, but something that keeps standing out to me that I think is real important that helps us would be for you to elaborate for a minute. You talked about uh, Mark 11, 23, 24, and how it says... Whatsoever or ask, where it talks about where that word ask means the, the literal meaning. The literal meaning when you look it up in the Greek for that word in that verse, and that's not the only one. It's used in numerous places. The literal meaning is strictly a demand for something due. Amen. And I think what's real important to grasp with this is strictly a demand for something due, not just a demand. Because there's a lot of people who think, oh, uh, you think you're going to tell God what to do. Are you kidding me? Our Father has made provision. Do you know how? <laughs> I'm going to use this as an example. Whenever uh, uh, my a parent passed away, my mom passed away, there were things that she left, things that belonged to her that were an inheritance to Amen. myself and my sister. In other words, these were things that were due us legally do us, legally belonged to us, legally needed to be transferred by the steps of the law to myself and my sister. And, and that's the same backing and the same meaning behind that, that, that word, as, that means strictly a demand for something due. We're not demanding it from God. We're telling that stupid lion, slew foot, foot devil, that you're not going to steal from me what my father, through the blood of Jesus, my big brother, gave me as my inheritance. And that's the foundation on which we can make a demand for something to do. But do something, if you would. Sure, I feel like, I know there are, but if you can give us a couple of verses where that is used, 
because the Word of God says that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. We know it's in Mark 11, and it's in a Bible. If you have, I can't think of what this program is called. PC, PC Study Bible. or yeah. You can actually get a free version of it online, PC mm -hmm. Study Bible. I think it's called Study Light or something like that. And it has a lot of these tools on it. And one of the best tools to, to be, well, the interlinear. If you, if you pull up the interlinear, the scriptures, in PC Study Bible, it will, uh, it, I'm sorry, I just realized I did something wrong there. Uh, if you pull up the interlinear, what it will do is it will pull up the strongest number over key words, mm -hmm. verbs, adverbs, yeah. uh, nouns, and what have you. Yes. And you can look them up. I was trying to do that very quickly. Let me see if I can well, get it to Acts work. 3 was one of the places. Peter said, uh, let's see, where was it? Well, I'm trying to back up a little bit. Yeah, Acts 3. Uh, but anyway, the name of Jesus, if, you, if you do this, I, I, you can't see this, and I can't really turn it to where you can right now. No, uh, I wish I could show y'all. But it, it, it says, whosoever shall say this man, let me see, shall not doubt, but shall believe what's, okay, shall come to pass, he shall help. What's it? Therefore I say, what things you pray, so ever you desire. See, it's that word, des use the word desire over here. Yes. And, and the the point is this, when when you look at the word that we keep saying is literally translated demand as being due, it comes from the Greek word which is numbered for the Strong's mm -hmm. Concordance. If you've got a Strong's you can look this up and it's the Greek word that's numbered New Testament 154 NT dash yes. or colon <laughs> 154 and it's pronounced Iateo. Mm -hmm. I had to. Now, I don't know Greek. I haven't stayed at a Holiday Inn recently. I've just got this Bible study <laughs> program that helps. And, and let, me, let me say something here. Because when you look this up in the Strong's, it gives you the definition. It mm -hmm. says, I had to of uncertain derivation to ask in a genitive case. Mm -hmm. And then it tells you how it's translated in the King James Version. Ask, beg, call for, crave, desire, require. And it tells you to compare it with the Strong's New Testament number 4441, or 4,441. What is this point? You have to go two steps back when you're literally looking this up uh, in a Strong's Concordance in order to find this. I don't know why in the world they didn't put it in the right on top, right there by the word. I think it's so strong <laughs> it intimidated the translators, it and seems. that's happened to time or two in it the seems. King James. Yeah. And I still love the King James. Mm -hmm. Well, what it's doing is when it gives you these other numbers, it's giving you other words that are translated as to ask or mm -hmm. desire or what have you. Mm -hmm. And so this word 4441 that it refers you to is punthen om ehi. It's a middle voice prolonged from a primary putho, which occurs only as an alternate in certain tenses. Listen, you'll get lost. I'm, yeah, I, I do. Yeah, you know? skip that. Just but it says, listen, it tells you how it's, <laughs> it, it's translated to question, to ascertain by inquiry, as a matter of information merely, and thus differing from New Testament 2065, which properly means a request as a favor, and from New Testament 154. 154. Again, remember, 154, that's the number that's associated with Iateho. And, and so uh, 154, it says this word differs from Iateo, which is strictly a demand for, for something, something due. due. Mm. Amen. And it's all through the New Testament. It, it is. It <laughs> certainly under desire, is. under the word ask. And so it's worth looking into. And the reason that I, you know, just well, tried to bring this out is, do you know how angry my, your own parents, imagine if you have an inheritance for your loved ones, whatever it is, you, let's say you own a home, and that would go to them, rightfully go to them. It would make you angry if they were like, oh, I just don't deserve that. I just don't want to do that. You know what? Your children or your family members may not have lifted one finger to work, to make the payments on that home or whatever belongs to you, but you would want them to have it. You would want it to go to them. And, and our, my, our mother would have wanted us to have what was rightfully ours 
And, and so my point is, how much more does God, as a good father, want us to have what belongs to us? And I love that it says strictly a demand for something due. Something due. It belongs to us. That's why we have the right to pray. That's why we have the right to claim the blessings that are outlined in the Word of God. This is why it's hugely important. The foundation of answered prayer is finding what the Word of God says that applies to our situation and then standing on it. If we try to, there are so many who think they, who say, I've prayed a lot of prayers that weren't answered, were not answered. They never laid it on the foundation of God's Word. Amen. It's so important that we lay it. God's Word, this is a that's, legal that's will, the way will you and can, testament. That's the only way you can determine what is due. Right. And, and uh, you know, there's so many verses when you when you accept what Strong's has given us in terms of that definition. Uh, and we're not the only ones. There are other no, theologians no, no. of other denominations who acknowledge this. Amen. <laughs> But that word that's translated, I tell you, that's translated demand as being due, is found 70 times in the New Testament. Wow. 70 times in the New Testament. Let me give you an example very quickly. Matthew 5, 42, it says, Give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not away. And that word, to him that asketh thee, uh, says, to, to him that demands what is due thee. See, there's some people that want to take this and, and just translate these thoughts in the context of modern English, and you just can't do that accurately. Mm -hmm. What it's talking about is a citizen who's under the occupation of Rome is obligated to respond when demands are placed upon him. In this day and time. Yes, in that day and time. Yeah. And so it's saying when, when a, you know, for example, a soldier... Uh, commands you to give him a shirt. Then they legally could give place that them. demand on them. They <laughs> legally could. They they had right because it was due. Uh, and uh, it, I, I love it. There's so many different verses here. I want to give you one more, and we we need to let you go yes. probably. But uh, look over if you would to James. Over in James, it says uh, to believers. And James one five says, "If you lack wisdom, let him ask of God." Well, it means demand of God that which is due. God has committed to give you wisdom. Mm -hmm. I, I love this verse particularly out of James. Though it says um, in in James four two, let me let me just go over there very quickly. You lust and have not; you kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight and when you have not, because you ask not. Mm. In other words, he's saying that believers are lacking in many cases because they're not demanding what is due them. Yes, yes. Remember how uh, how Peter prayed for that lame man? He didn't say, oh God, if it be you will, please heal this poor soul. And he didn't whisper. He, he didn't. knew what belonged to him. Absolutely. He knew what God knew had what made, ava made available, and he knew that he was living a lesser life without God's provision. Amen. God doesn't want you or I to live a lesser life in light of what he's aware he's made provision for for us. He wants you to hold your head high. He wants you to walk, I've used this term before, like you own cotton in Augusta. He wants you to stand <laughs> tall. He, wa he wants all of us to, to carry ourselves and have the demeanor that belongs to us based on who our daddy is. We know who our daddy is. We know who our father is. We know what he's provided for us. And this isn't an arrogance. Right. And this isn't an arrogance. We're walking secure and solid and unmoved and unshaken Amen. on a pathway and a foundation because of who our father is. It's not because of who we are. It's because of who is in us. It's because of who backs us. Yeah, what was it? Was it Smith Wigglesworth who said, "I'm ten times bigger on the inside." No, I think he said, "A million times bigger, bigger on, on the inside, inside than I am on the outside." So whatever comes our way, whatever challenges may come up, we are we are ten times or a million times bigger on the inside than we are on the outside. What does that mean? That means God's already placed the provision, the seed on the inside of us. God if we would speak to it, if we would speak in this world, we're to 
speak in this world that we live in, declaring and decreeing God's word. And, and why Amen. Why would he tell us to take authority? Why would he say what things you, you bind on earth will be bound in heaven if he didn't want us to bind anything? Why would he say that? If his will is being done everywhere, why would he give us that specific direction? We're going to see situations and circumstances that the will of God is not being wrought, is not being done. There are many of us that are praying and interceding for families and loved ones and cities and states and counties and we're standing with regards to we are the salt and the light and we have a right to pray for truth and justice to prevail and, and we thank God for that in our prayer time Amen. we can't, can't keep Amen. going we need Amen. to go ahead and pray for Amen. people and let them go Listen, I, I, well, I'll close with this one thought think about this we're talking about demanding what is due so what we're doing is we're banking on all that was appropriated for us or bought for oh, us done. by the sacrifice God made of his son. Yes. I want you to think about this. We were talking about this. We touched on it a little bit last week. But when it came time for man's redemption and the purchase of it, there wasn't enough gold in heaven. There weren't enough jewels in heaven. God didn't say go out there and scrape up the gold off the streets. We'll use asphalt. Right. He didn't say tear down the walls around Jerusalem. We're going to send all the gems. Because... If you took the sum total of all the wealth that's represented in the precious stones and in the gold okay. and precious metals in heaven, mm -hmm. it, it wouldn't amount to the value in one drop of Jesus' blood. Amen. And so uh, when you think about that and you realize that Jesus' blood was shed to purchase your redemption yes. and purchase for you an inheritance, provide you with an inheritance. Yes. Oh, For Lord, this wouldn't it be a shame? Wouldn't it be a shame when so much was spent not to, not to, to me, to ignore what's been bought is to thumb our nose at the sacrifice that's been made. And I don't think anybody would maliciously or intentionally do that. Right. But sometimes we just need to see it for what it is yes. to understand how important it is yes. for us yes. to pay attention and take hold. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Go ahead and pray and we'll close. Well, we want to... Father, if you've never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we'd like to give you this opportunity Amen. now. Amen. The Word of God tells God us you. that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever, whosoever would believe in him would confess Jesus as Lord and Savior with our mouth, that we'd be saved. Why is this important? There is so, It's basically a gift from heaven and he doesn't ask us to do anything, but he does ask us, will you simply receive the gift, the best gift I gave the best, our Father God in heaven gave the best gift he had for us. And his question to mankind is, would you simply receive what I provided for you? Amen. It belongs to you. Would you receive it? And so that's what salvation is all about. It's not about, it's not about cleaning ourselves up. It's not about Getting learning a new religious language. It's not about the things we do. It's about who we know, who we know. And he longs to spend time with us Amen. daily and share his love for us and in us to bring strength and encouragement and healing. Amen. So pray this prayer with me if you've never received Jesus and you want to do that. And let us know. You know how to contact us. Let us know if you prayed this prayer with us. We want to send you a booklet. We're not going to track you down like bloodhounds. We just want to give you something to help build you up. Amen. Amen. Pray this prayer. Father God, I thank you that you gave Jesus the best you had because you loved me that much. And Father, yes, I receive your gift that you gave me, your son now, inviting your son to come live in my heart as my Lord and Savior. I thank you that you raised him from the dead and that he's alive and well, and now he's alive and well on the inside of me. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Thank you so much for joining with us today. We are so honored to be yes. able to break the bread of life with you, to yes. share God's word with you. Listen, I, I I love the Lord. I love the things that he's done in my life, but I, I find such joy in helping other people uh, recognize what he's done for them and yes. enjoy what he's done for them. Yes. Amen. Amen. I, I love it when 
when people have been given up and we can offer them a word that will bring hope and healing yes. and, and see them live. And Amen. we're here because of the goodness of God. We are. We are. I have... Uh, <laughs> miracle after miracle. Just since October of this year, there are yeah. uh, you know, two different times that I have been on, they call it death's doorstep, but I was on my way out. I know what it feels like to die, and I was on my way out of my body when... Robin called me back, and the Holy Ghost with me <laughs> said, "She's calling you back. You got to go back. Amen." Amen. And, and uh, I know what that's like, and and I know what it's like to lose loved ones. And I want to help you. Yes. Seize control of your life. Amen. Yes. yes. God bless you. We love you, and we're praying for you. We hope to see you again soon. <laughs> Amen. Bye bye. Says.